Hey, I'm Justin with the Slash Route Bus. This is Fibonacci. And uh, we're going to tell you today about our battery box. Uh, this is actually the third revision of the battery box, but since we didn't shoot uh, a, a video for either of the first two, I just want to give a quick history. When we first bought the bus, we put two 12-volt uh, lead-acid floats in batteries, and um, we ran them as well as we could. They were, you know, kind of, I got them from Walmart, sorry. <laughs> um, we did okay. Then uh, later we got uh, gifted from our friend Johan, who maybe is watching this video, uh, six absorbent glass matte batteries, uh, black medical 55 amp hour batteries. We put those in, had a much better experience, uh, and then more recently we've added a lot of the upgrades that we're gonna show you now. This is the battery box. Okay, we're plugged into shore power right now, so you can see we have uh, the shore power wire running into the box. Okay, and we'll show you that in a little bit. All right. <clears throat> So let's start over here with the batteries. Okay, these are our AGM or absorbent glass mat batteries. They are lead acid batteries. Okay, they run a slightly wider voltage range than lead acid float batteries. Uh, we charge them up ideally to about 14 volts and then we use them down to about 11. Um, depends, right? It depends on the logistics of where we are and how much power we can get. Uh, now these batteries are connected to each other in parallel. And that means that we have the positive lead of each battery connected to the positive lead of every other battery. They're 12 volts. By running them in parallel, we keep that voltage, the, the 12 voltage. Uh, running batteries in series, of course, meaning connecting the positive of one to the negative of the next, uh, it gives you, a, uh, you, you can add the voltage together. But we want our system to be at 12 volts. By running the batteries in parallel, are, uh, we're able to, to add the capacity to each other. Okay, so these little black ones are 55 amp hour, uh, and this uh, Optima Blue Top, I think, is 90 amp hour thereabouts. And so all told, we have in the mid 300s amp hour, right? Because again, we're combining the capacity of the battery, so we have 350, 370 amp hours, something like that. Uh, and so they're all connected, and... Um, they're also, the negative side of the batteries are connected to uh, a shunt. And here's the shunt. This shunt, being connected to the frame of the bus, means that it creates a circuit with all the other devices that are connected to the frame of the bus. For example, this red wire uh, is a two gauge, I believe, rated for 100 amps. This connects to our DC distribution panel on our energy wall, which we show in a different video. Uh, the DC distribution system is then used to distribute power to uh, our LEDs, our uh, wireless networking gear, uh, various charging around the bus, our water pump, our stereo, all of the devices that we use that don't run through the inverter. In turn, those are grounded to the frame of the bus, creating a current through uh, a circuit through this shunt. Now this shunt is able then to measure all of the current that is being used by all of those devices throughout the bus. And you can see that the shunt is connected to this device here, that's the Bogart pentametric monitor. And uh, then the pentametric monitor is connected via this Cat5 cable to the, uh, the screen, the meter that we have on the energy wall, which again, we show in a different video. Okay, so again, by connecting, by grounding all of the devices in the bus, through that shunt, we're able to measure the current that we are consuming. And you can see, in this case, I have my utility light here, which I rarely use, but I you know, wanted to demonstrate it for the purpose of this video. I connect that through the shunt as well. Why? Because I want the metering system to know about every electron that is flowing through the circuits that are connected to these batteries. Now you can see we have another shunt here. See that little guy in the back? Now that shunt performs the same function, but instead of being connected to the frame of the bus and thus uh, allowing all of the devices in the bus to complete their circuit through it, this shunt is connected to our inverter and to our battery charger. You can see this clip here uh, is for the battery charger and then it's connected via uh, a thicker cable uh, to the power inverter. Uh, now the inverter we only ever use on the road and the charger we only ever use when we're plugged in, right? We, we'd never, there'd never be a reason to use them both at the same time. <coughs> so when we are 
measuring positive current, meaning we electrons are coming into the battery system through this shunt, we know that we're on shore power and we have the charger going. When we're measuring negative current through that shunt, we know that it's through the inverter. And by measuring the current, leaving the batteries destined for the inverter, and then also measuring the current that the devices connected to the inverter are using, we can know the efficiency of the inverter. Now let's look over here. This is our solenoid. That's a battery isolator solenoid. This cable runs up to the... <laughs> this cable runs up to the... Sorry if my hair is getting in the way. This cable runs up to the, the road uh, batteries. Well, we can uh, open the door over here. Okay, those are our two batteries that we use uh, to start the bus. And those are uh, regular lead acid float batteries. When the bus is sitting here off, like it is now, I'm going to take a quick break for the banana. Okay, we all have to eat a rotten banana once in a while. Uh, the road batteries, when the bus is sitting here off, the road batteries are uh, disconnected from the house batteries. This means that we can use our house batteries and discharge them, and the next time we go to turn the key in the bus, our road batteries will still be full. However, once we turn that key, some voltage comes through this little tiny red wire here, and that causes the solenoid to unite the two systems. So once the key is turned, the bus is running, we're going down the road, the alternator is pushing current into the house batteries, some of that current makes its way, I'm sorry, into the road batteries, some of that current makes its way back into the house batteries. This means that sometimes as we're driving, if we're not using very much uh, energy, we arrive uh, at a place fully charged. And in fact, we typically do arrive fully charged. Uh, now, once we arrive at a, at a location, if we have access to shore power through this black cable here, this is a 30 amp rated outdoor cable, we plug in to the shore power, which often is like a three prong outlet at, at a friend's house or a relative's house or a campground. Uh, and at that time, our battery charger automatically goes into float mode. Now again, because we're probably already charged, the battery charger, all it has to do is keep the batteries topped off, right? Uh, in the scenario where we're not fully charged, for example, if we've spent a couple of days boondocking and we only drive, you know, half an hour down the road and don't give our batteries time to charge through the solenoid, now our batteries are, say, half full, and we do need to charge, then we come and charge the batteries, but charge the batteries. Good job. It's the red charge button. Um, so that gives you a pretty good sense, I think, of the battery box. Um, we have our double gang here that our shore power connects to. Uh, when we <clears throat> when we hit the road, we disconnect. These are our two house circuits for AC. We disconnect that and plug it into the inverter. Um, I think that gives a pretty good impression of uh, where we are with uh, version 3 of the battery box. I also want to point out we have some uh, skid proof matting here, which uh, has made created a much greater sense of safety. I mean, the batteries really don't move at all. And we also have them held down by uh, these rubber tie downs, but it's nice to have the skid proof stuff in here. Um, and then we have the inside spray painted with a Rust-Oleum white spray. Um, in the future, one of the next steps that we uh, intend to take is to add solar panels uh, to the top of the bus. And um, then we'll have another shunt where we measure the incoming power from the charge controller. Currently, we use this Bogart pentametric system. Ideally, I think at some point, what we'll, what we'll do is directly measure the voltage going across the shunts into uh, a microcomputer and um, that way we can kind of run our own real-time metrics on the current on the shunt. So those are some next steps that we'll be taking in the battery box. Um, of course, see the description for uh, relevant links and uh, look forward to all of your questions.